All right, so the Jackery Solar Generator. This one is the uh, Explorer 2000, which is kind of the mid-range as far as what they make for these things. Uh, I've had it for a while now, and I use it to basically run uh, my shed in the backyard. Uh, so I can walk in, turn lights on, charge batteries. I've tried it on a bunch of other stuff. Uh, the shop vac, I've taken it to the cabin on family vacations. All in all, I've been very, very happy with it. But there's one thing that I want to try, and that's welding with it. On the box that it came in, if you look, it's got a guy right there. See? Shows the guy welding. So I'm, I'm skeptical, but I'm also really curious because this could really help me out uh, if I'm welding outside of the shop. Um, it would be... It would be really nice if I could just bring this with, along with my welder, the gas bottle, and do a certain amount of welding, um, and then not have to be worried about plugged into anything. Now, uh, we're gonna do MIG welding. Uh, I have the Hobart Handler 210 MBP, uh, and it runs off uh, 220 or 110. So this obviously doesn't do 220, so we're gonna run it off 110. I'm gonna be welding on just an eighth inch piece of angle iron uh, so this is 12 inches long and what i'm thinking is let's shoot for 10 feet of weld and then we'll see where this is at uh, i'll have the camera pointed at this because this will give real-time statistics as far as the uh, wattage output and estimated time till empty and also how much the overall is in there so i want to see where that's going to be at after 10 feet of weld if it'll make it 10 feet of weld I don't know if the thing will overheat or if it has an automatic shutoff. Um, I don't even know if my welder will be okay with it. My welder might say, hey, I can't pull enough amps out of this or something. Plug all this stuff in together. Uh, we're going to be on the higher end of what this is capable of doing when it's plugged into 110. I'm almost maxed out here for what this wants as far as running off of 110, and you should be able to see the real-time results there. Yep, there we go. So that's your output right there. 51 watts. I'm betting that's going to shoot way up here in a second. Let's see if we can make it to 10 feet. No. That did not work. Okay, the jackery seems okay with it. The welder does not. Okay, I'm going to try lowering my settings way down. I'm going to cut everything in half. I'm going to try to turn it up a little higher and see what happens. Oh, where are we at for our settings here? 99%. Okay, so the jackery doesn't mind. We're going to go up a little hotter here. Try it again.
I don't know if I'm going to shoot for a whole 12 inches again, maybe 6. My hub will I turn it on. And made about less than one inch on the slightly higher setting before the welder turned off. Welding, um, and we'll, we'll talk about what we learned. So that played out a little different than I thought. Um, this thing didn't really have a problem. Uh, after the, the trial run here, we're still sitting at 98% here. So this, this is not going to be your problem. Um, I think what I was running into is a duty cycle uh, on the welder. Uh, it's not something that I know a lot about, but basically the gist of it is it takes a lot for the welder to convert. And since this is nowhere near putting out the same power as uh, some of my other power sources or like the 220. Um, your duty cycle is going to be a lot lower and that's basically how long can you weld before the welder needs to uh, cool off from converting all of that power, stepping it up into a weldable range. Um, but if you had plenty of patience uh, and you did uh, work within the duty cycle of your welder, this would not be a problem because yeah, look, we're at 98%. Um, this little baby weld here uh, is not. <laughs> so that that was uh, that was on the very lower end settings of the machine. Um, cranked it up a little higher, uh, and we put a slightly bigger weld there. Um, and then cranking it up to where it actually should be for welding eighth inch, it, it wouldn't even do it. Um, so that was not a limitation here. Uh, duty cycle and issue with the welder. But yeah, like I was saying, if you had some patience and, and gave this time to, to cool down uh, in between welds, I think, yeah, you could definitely use this uh, if you were out in the field or on the site where you didn't have another power source. Uh, just don't, don't expect to be doing uh, anything heavy duty with it. It's gonna be on the light end, uh, not, not, uh, not anything this thick. But it's still cool to play around with this. I think it would be neat next to try it with the TIG welder. So it would be pretty cool for another video another day uh, to see the limitations of trying to TIG weld off of this thing. Um, but yeah, it showed, where's the box? It showed welding on the box and we did weld off the Jackery. So uh, yeah, I, I call that a success as far as uh, welding off of a solar generator. I mean, it's, it's a big battery. Uh, Final thoughts, final thoughts. Uh, still really like the thing. Um, I have a feeling I might make a few more videos uh, involving this guy and what it can do. Um, yeah, this was fun. Uh, and this was, you know, we charge this up with solar panels, so I'm welding, welding with energy from the sun, which is neat. Yeah, I think that's it. We'll have to try it with the TIG welder at some point and uh, go from there.